Hello Unity 2020 or former Unity 2020 folks. I am making this last video for you guys. Uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet as best I can today. So at one point shortly before uh, the unfortunate suspension of Unity 2020 in the end, uh, we were working on a little project. We being just about six of us, uh, just a few of us and myself, we're working on a project that we called Operation Purple Cow. And we deliberately kept it quiet, um, not terribly quiet, but enough to keep it uh, from being uh, projected out into, uh, into the ethosphere uh, for fear of it not actually being uh, a fully fledged idea yet. But as the idea evolved and it got uh, better over time, uh, I like to think that it is one very likely way that we could have made some progress uh, among the other facets of the movement. The reason why I'm making this video then is to simply tell you about Operation Purple Cow. I am no longer investing myself in uh, commitment to this project, but I wanted to give the opportunity to somebody, if they felt motivated to do it, to carry forward with it. Now, this was with the help with, of um, specifically Dave Stevens, who is also still working on a game. He's, uh, he's made one already for Unity 2020, and now he seems to be working on another one uh, with this idea somewhat in mind. Uh, Nate S. Uh, I cannot remember your last name, Nate. I apologize. I think it's Smolensky or something to that effect, so sorry for butchering that. But Nate also was giving us a bit of a political point of view. Stephen Bush had many wonderful ideas to contribute to the mix as well, as did Greg, uh, whose last name I never learned, I'm afraid, yet. Uh, maybe I will later. And Tracy Tucker. I appreciate all you guys for what you did to, to help um, brainstorm this and try and bring this to fruition as best we could. So, uh, it wasn't alive for very long either, for that matter. But... Uh, let's go over real quick what it was. So Operation Purple Cow was meant to do just one basic thing, which was to help facilitate the most obvious aspect of the movement. Obvious to us and only a step away from being obvious, I would like to think, from other people, which is that the exhausted majority is be unaware of itself at least of its own power. So I think that it's, I think it's fair to say most people might, if they're in the exhausted majority, if they're in that, that, you know, 60 plus range, 60 percent plus range of people who uh, know, who, who feel disillusioned and disheartened by politics and by the polarization, they, a lot of them likely know that there are other people in that same position. Uh, a smaller number of them might know how many other people are in that same position and fewer yet, and, and this is part of what I wanted to hone in on in, in an earlier video, fewer yet maybe intuitively get it. You know, there is something about hearing 60% or 70% of people and then actually witnessing that in some way and seeing it, getting it intuitively, not being the same thing as conceptualizing it rationally. So this was meant to help bypass the sort of uh, barriers to understanding it conceptually by hitting it at a gut level to actually see the numbers of people that actually are there, their faces and some to some extent perhaps are there and you could witness them. So let's hop over here for a second. So this was the document that we worked under. Uh, we had a uh, two meetings max and uh, uh, actually Stephen Bush was the only one who made it for the last meeting. So thank you, Stephen. You were a huge help as well in getting this last, the last few pieces put together here. Um, the, the basis for this was uh, uh, the following. So parameters of the mechanism, we, we knew that it needed to be very, very simple. So even as in the early stages we were thinking about a game or something like that, the idea is that it needed absolutely minimal bells and whistles. We didn't want a bunch of stuff uh, being part of it. Um, all right, and furthermore, um, as I said, it needed to be intuitive. It needed minimal prompting for someone to get, to get engaged and to follow through with completing. Perhaps, if possible, silly, short, and instantly gratifying. And that's, we'll talk about that in the possible model in a second. It also needed to stand out from anything else that people have seen so far. And this part still needs some work. The purple cow really comes from 
uh, oh, I'm totally forgetting his name, Seth Godin. Uh, he mentioned the purple cow in a TED talk a while back. And the purple cow is meant to stand for uh, the thing that pops out to you, not the normal uh, cattle that you drive by each day of the week, but that one special purple cow that you would stop the car for and notice. Uh, it also needed to be very fast moving, which is now uh, questionable. It's now up to you whether or not it's fast moving because uh, it was meant to beat the deadline before the plug got pulled. It needed to not be centered around unity and its and its presentation. And this was also very important. I felt that we were spending so much time focusing on promoting unity, uh, the unity movement, that it became really hard to just hook people where they actually were, to meet them where they are, uh, which is tricky anyway. But uh, especially when you're, you're busy promoting the boat over where the boat's supposed to take you. Uh, that it could be potentially featured on social media, um, we needed a backup plan in case it got censored or banned, like the Twitter incident. Uh, possibly, but not necessarily use, utilizing ranked choice voting. I decided actually that uh, the ranked choice voting thing would be nice, but in this case too complicated. In order to keep it simple, and actually the simpler version of this is what I think would be effective, uh, bypassing the RCV simulation would actually, I think, be more beneficial. It needed to, over time also, uh, start to add users to the Unity funnel by by finally meeting them at the point where they are ready to do so. They are ready to take action because they have witnessed how much how many people are there are and therefore <clears throat> begun to intuit by that point how much power the exhausted majority would have if they were to take it up. Uh, it would also uh, be you could compare it to things like Flappy Bird and Cow Clicker. The Cow Clicker, excuse me. Those were a couple of examples of just how simple, in essence, it it could be. Although that it really couldn't be uh, quite that simple, uh, given that it, it does have a political theme involved. Uh, but it elicits a positive experience, um, despite the political stress. Uh, the silliness would hopefully be a part of that, uh, token part of that, and then takes advantage of the time. Uh, when people are really wanting something humorous and short-lived, something a, a little bit away from all the stress and everything again. Uh, also commits to a balance between something something abstract and something concretely political. In other words, uh, something that uh, 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 is clearly political but doesn't necessarily pertain to specific issues we are seeing today. Uh, that said, it still needed to have some relevance so that people could kind of start to recognize who's who. And we'll see more of that in the model. And then it also needed a reliable system for potential data collection and, and proper looping. And the looping aspect was just a, a looping of the simulation or game or whatever it is, uh, or poll as uh, uh, how is the way I'm going to show it today, um, which is not its final form at all. A way of looping it so that people could, could do it over and over again and see more and more people's general and uh, to see more and more people, uh, their, the social proof that, of what those people answered as well, and, and in the end, we'll see what that means. But the data collection piece then would also be necessary and beyond my uh, ability to perform. So here's the proposed model. Um, this was um, actually proposed best by Greg. So Greg, if you're watching this, thank you. This was, I think, um, among the best ideas that, that were proposed. We have a red elephant, a blue donkey, and a purple cow, which uh, seemed fitting given the it wasn't even in mind when we named it, and now it made even more sense uh, to, to, for there to be a purple cow. Scenarios and consequence, consequences and actions likely lead the user to choosing the purple cow, and you'll see why in a second. Preference ordering of candidates, candidates by the user is revealed to other users and sequentially offers the opportunity to recognize other users and real people who are also users in the simulation. Uh, in other words, uh, people see each other over time. They see the social proof because those are real people. They're not just uh, uh, you know, a figure. They're not just a figure, a 60% or a 70%. They're not just a figure out there. They're, they are actual people in the world uh, that you have proof to playing this game and, and coming up with the same answers as you did. 
The, it would feature also running totals and some sequitur to actual events, including the real life Purple Cow. Obviously we mean Unity 2020 at the time we did, now just the Unity movement in general, uh, as well as the candidates or pending heroes as we call them. <clears throat> Never mind the question for now. Let's take a look at potential scenarios. I want to see what is basically in here before I actually share this document uh, on the feed. Uh, so the potential scenarios and, and responses, the basis is this. You're, you start with a, an intro message, and I'll actually go on and show you um, a version. This is not what it actually needs to look like. This is a prototype of what it could look like in part with a lot more beefing up. Again, keeping it nonetheless relatively simple. Act quick. Hear out each animal's Animal candidates response to the question, then rank them all in your order of preference. Should the zookeepers demand more output performance from zoo animals? So this is one of many potential questions. In fact, there are many scenarios in here. Uh, this first one uh, has to do is more or less relative, uh, relevant to taxes. Uh, there are ones on, on gun rights that uh, we can actually probably skip. Uh, let's see, trade and tariffs. Uh, college, student debt, immigration, healthcare. There are several categories you can see on the left-hand side. Um, abortion rights, I, I actually suggested we get rid of just to prevent any uh, major heat around around it. Keeping, trying to keep it somewhat fun. Um, so coming back to the game for a moment. So Red Elephant says in response to this prompt, we are going to ensure reliable cuts in performance calls, particularly those Oh, this is not real. By the way, sorry, this is the old one. This is before Stephen Bush prompted a steel manning of their positions. That was a much better solution than what is currently in there. So let me actually tell you what um, it's been uh, revamped into. My performance cuts have re-stimulated our zoo's popularity. Asking for more performances bankrupts our finest performers, right? That's the red elephant and preferably with an image or, or something of some sort to, to relate them with. Uh, Blue Donkey says, we ought to raise our minimum reward amounts per performance. And I'm not sure what that's there for. So let's just keep it that for now. And then Purple Cow says, this is an important issue, but if we don't get good leadership first, how will all the animals' voices get heard? Now, to be honest, that part of the text is the least important for the effect that we're aiming for. And I'll show you what that effect is. Regardless of what's being said, because honestly, I'm, I'm basing it on a, on a very strict form of intuitionism here. People already have some belief and what they're looking for is that confirmation of the belief. And this may play into what, what Brett Weinstein has called verificationism to, to a good degree. But it also, I think, is a fair... Uh, I think it's a fair assumption to make of people in the general, in the general sense. We try to be rational, but I think intuitionism is a much more appropriate model for understanding people in general. One-on-one -on -one is easy. It's easier, I mean, to, to imagine rational discussion in one-on-one. -on -one. Dealing with people in groups and populations where especially that those sorts of opportunities are, are, are sparse at best. Um, not, not going to be there as easily. So what we're not, we're not looking to convince anyone of anything here. We're letting them choose based on their own prior belief. So if, let's say I'm, you know, a Trump supporter. So I am undoubtedly going to choose Red Elephant, but I have two choices to make, similar to ranked choice voting, but not quite the same. So I choose Red Elephant. Now I have to, by nature of the game and the simulation here, I have to make a second choice. And the second choice here, it's giving me all three, but in reality, this poll or this this game would eliminate the first choice I made. So I can't just sit here and go red elephant, red elephant. There would be two choices left. I, e I either have to choose blue donkey or I have to choose purple cow. If I'm a true Trump supporter, due to the polarization effect, I am more than likely going to choose purple cow. If only because blue donkey has been touted to me since who knows how long as my arch enemy. Why would I choose blue blue donkey? So the the rational, in my own mind, rational, legitimate choice here is to choose purple cow. In doing so, and then I would rank them. In doing so then, uh, after I rank them and I and I and I submit them, 
then I could see how many other people chose Blue Donkey, maybe Red Elephant, maybe a few people chose Purple Cow first. That's great. If so, we're, we're looking at somebody, that data is valuable, right? We're looking at someone who is definitely in the exhaustive majority. Someone who's playing it and chooses Purple Cow second kind of almost has to by logical default, whether they're part of the exhaustive majority or not. And so that data is not as important to us. But what is, is, what is important though is that no matter who I am, Purple Cow is going to get into this vote one way or another. They're either going to get that there in the primary slot or in the secondary slot. As such, over the long run, if you can imagine a, a long number of trials of this uh, taking place, prefer preferably over a short amount of time, uh, we would see Purple Cow come out ahead. And the people who would be um, submitting these would be coming at the end of the submission. They would go to a screen that would then allow them to see how many other people and preferably at least a few profiles. That's why the social media aspect may or may not be important, but if nothing else, uh, a first name or something that someone could submit prior to even playing, or even if it's a code name, it doesn't matter. What they need is they need to see, they need to see names, they need to see that people are playing this thing and that Purple Cow is getting ahead. And the nature of how Purple Cow is getting ahead is, is likely to be, um, it's not that far a push to, to rationalize why that would happen, but I suspect it would still catch enough people off guard that they wouldn't necessarily, even if they could rationalize it, they would still be probably impressed to see that this one candidate would get to the top uh, more than likely. Because what we, would, what we would most likely see over the largest number of trials is red elephant at around 50%, a uh, blue uh, donkey at around 50% um, of one or the other primary versus secondary, but it's going to be it's going to have to be secondary in the end because purple cow is going to be part of everybody's vote, which means all the secondary votes for purple cow are going to be posted onto. They're going to be added in addition to even if they're half a point or whatever. They're going to be added in addition to the primary votes. So purple cow is going to come out ahead, and it's going to represent therefore the 100% um, primary. Uh, vote in the long run. And if people saw that, I think it would help them see that this is a real thing. These are real people. These are real people answering. And this is a due effect, but it's due to polarization. Polarization would actually be helping produce this effect in the worst case. In the best case, we wouldn't see much polarization at all. We would see mostly exhausted majority folks playing the game and just confirming that they themselves are also part of that majority. Okay, so as I said, this is not a project I will be carrying through with. I put it out there to you. I don't know what amount of funds and everything else would be necessary, not only to produce this thing, uh, or even if you could make it for free, what it would take to get it out there uh, in the marketplace, into a place where people, they got eyeballs, where people would, would, would for free, I hope, of course, uh, play it, use it, and recognize in a, in, in a short period of time the power of the exhaustive majority that truly is. We, you, and I know is there, but uh, uh, they may not be privy to. So thank you for your time. Uh, it was under 20 minutes. How about that? See you next time. And unity to us all.